everybody! Welcome to another episode of Ten Forward Weekly. Uh, my name is Mike Fadem. I am also known as Ambassador Kell, and I am your community manager. And I'm super excited this week because we have one of my absolute favorite people in the world. Uh, you know her as the mother of all Klingons, uh, the uh, uh, first Chancellor of the Klingon Empire. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mary Chifo! That way! <laughs> I always forget the cameras are first. Uh, And also joining us to talk about uh, the experience on making the game is uh, another one of my favorite people in the world, uh, the design director for Star Trek Online, uh, Al Rivera. I'm just like doing the (laughs) Nice, nice. (laughs) Welcome, welcome. How are you guys doing today? Great now. (laughs) (laughs) I I, am. I'm I'm doing well. I'm happy, really happy to be here, and uh, I've been looking forward to this. So it's I me too. This is very exciting. We had we had Sam on last week. We have you on this week. We just we're getting the Klingon trifecta. Yeah. <laughs> um, but before we dive into questions, we do a thing every week where we look at the fan art that was sent us for this week, and I wanted to dive into those really quick before we uh, before we got too far, so I don't forget. Uh, so first of all, uh, from uh, Lewis, that was the only name he gave us, or possibly Luis. This is uh, his Discovery era Klingon that he uh, created from the new thing, standing over the captain he just murdered. To take control of his ship fabulous oh, fabulous amazing <laughs> uh and this is eric graves because it's the 11th anniversary he sent us one of his favorite moments in star trek online uh he said it was the final battle but i didn't specify from what so i assume the iconian war somewhere <laughs> uh and finally uh our favorite uh, triple master, uh, n- not triple master, um, tardigrade master, uh, Duncan uh, Idaho sent us this lovely oh. drawing of, inv- of Lieutenant Tardigrade, uh, campaigning for Adip Pa to take the chancellor position. I'm not sure how Lave- Lorel would feel about that. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh. Tardigrade's just so cute. It's hard to, hard yeah. to protect. <laughs> All right. You can have what you can have whatever you want. It's fine. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about House Reborn. Um, I remember, God, like a year and a half ago, uh, Al came up to my desk and was like, hey, I have this great idea. Uh, Jaula's going to revive Laurel. And I was like, that's so freaking cool. Uh, but how did the, the process come about in terms of like, you know, reaching out to you and getting you involved? Great question. Al, do you want to? No, please. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, 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 don't don't worry. I'll jump into how Al came up with the idea after this. That's part of my question <laughs> flow. All right, I'll tell you. Yeah, this will be. It's like yeah. It's what was it where you see the multiple perspectives of yeah. Of yeah, sure. I mean, we can yes, do that. Yeah, Rashomon. We're gonna Rashomon. Yeah, this. yeah. There, there we go. <laughs> you knew exactly where I was going. I did. Um, um, <laughs> so yeah. So from my perspective, it was. Uh, I remember we first met at a, at the Vegas convention, I believe. Was that three years ago? Yeah. That, that would have been the year that, the first year that you were there. So I guess that was three oh, years yeah. ago. Yeah. Right. Or four, or four yeah. even, if we count 2020. It was the first time that the Discovery cast was there. Yeah. 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 So that was, yeah. And it was, the show hadn't aired yet. And uh, <laughs> we were just all g- giving everyone a. Had it? A no, play. I think the, sh- the show had aired. I think in this one. I oh, thought it had started airing, but I'm because we'd we, we were promoting Age of it Discovery was, at that point. It was but the, I don't know. it was the day that everybody got on stage with the disco T-shirts. Yes. Right. Oh yes, 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 I remember that. Yes. yes. So that was yes. It was the first my first official Vegas. I had been there the year prior before the show had opened. It kind of okay. just wandered about and because everyone's like this is the last time you're going to be able to do this without it being (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yes i do remember that with all the disco shirts and i was so lovely and uh told me a bit about the game in general and was that when you first planted the seed that laurel might might come along i think yes that was uh i i think at that point i already knew what we wanted to do i think mm-hmm. at that point we already had mary wiseman on yes. on the yeah. game at that point because so she did she did our does our tutorial mm-hmm. um so we already did that and um i don't remember we i think we had reka maybe at the same at that time mm-hmm. as well i'm not sure if we had I thought her we yet. reached out to reka the next year but anyway might it might have been yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's a little it does not while, matter yeah. i don't know why but, i corrected yeah. you yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but I, well, all I, what I remember the, emotionally was that Al was so lovely and clearly passionate, uh, as he has continued to prove to me uh, ever since then. 
And then, yeah, we, we uh, I think, again, at the next Vegas convention, uh, and then there was a, uh, an event at the um, yeah. Paley Center when right. the um, exhibit was there, which was such an incredible exhibit. Just right. so amazing. And uh, that was, that's when I distinctly remember Al giving me more of a flavor of uh, what we have ended up, uh, what it has ended up to be. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what has come to be on the game. <laughs> and uh, that was, that was thrilling. I mean, uh, I've said this before too, like any, anytime Laurel gets to exist is a thrill, uh, but particularly uh hearing such an exciting plot uh, at the time i was just like oh that's so cool to have her back in that capacity and then last year uh i'll reach back out and said because i keep uh joking about this but i remember you saying i think 2021 and at the time i was like well that's that's a while away and then suddenly <laughs> here we are uh -huh. yeah. and uh and uh and yeah and uh i was so lovely and and then broke down the story a little bit even more for me once i got uh, my line so i could have more context and that was really great and uh and yeah i was just was jazz and then and then we uh and then we recorded so <laughs> <laughs> i i remember you doing the uh the like last uh anonymous walk around the floor of the convention because i think you came by our booth near closing and was like <laughs> can can I sit in the chair? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so Al, where did this, I know, you know, we sort of um, met Laurel at the same time as most of the audience and, you know, during the season one of Discovery. What was the point that it jumped into your brain of like, we need to get her as a major character for the show or for the game? You know, um, I don't remember. I remember falling in love with the Laurel character and the, the power and presence that she had, especially in season two, right? Um, and so I guess you and uh, Valk have something in common then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just, uh, it, it was. It's so I don't. Re I know that you know we started this story with CBS about Juula, who is the sister of Takuvma. Uh, Mike Johnson and and Kirsten Beyer created that story for the comics, and so we had this story and. I know where we want it to end, and it hasn't ended yet, so I can't say too much yeah. about how we want it to how we want it to end. And that ending and so, was what you pitched on pitched me on the first time. That was so great. Excuse me, yeah. I'm just trying to get rid of this glare. Continue talking. <laughs> <laughs> the light so, of Kalish. Yes. <laughs> so, so when we when we write a story and create a story, we start with like what we what where do we want. I usually start with where we want this to end, and then where we want to begin, and then in the middle we just start. You know, we flesh out how we get how we get there from point A to B. Um, and so I, I know, I, I know where we wanted to go and then, but it, you know, we unfold the story over a course of maybe two or three years, right? It's, a, yeah. or, you know, maybe two, two, two and a half years. I don't remember how long at this point, but we, so we have to have a commitment, at least a, a, a certain level of, of excitement from an actor. If we know if we want to go in a direction, then sometimes we have plan B's if someone's not interested. So I love going to meet people like yourself, Mary, at at places like like stlb although i don't know when we're ever going to go back to stlb <laughs> anymore <laughs> but because then i can i i i can see I, I first put a face to the name you know and so when you get cold called either through an agent or something it's there's there's some interest there but it also gives me an opportunity to see how well engaged somebody is um, how interested they really are and you get different levels of interest or engagement and sometimes you're like i understand they probably get people probably get hit up all the time by someone i got this really cool thing i want you to join me with at stlv because people always just you know so so mm -hmm. they 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 maybe maybe not not don't know if i am legit person you know legitly working with cbs to do something and i'm really this is really what i want to do um it's really going to come through but it does give me an opportunity to see how well someone is engaged and you were really really engaged and like you were really <laughs> you could see i could see there are a lot of the excitement with you and then like later that day that's when we uh, i was we were just finished i think mike was there too we were just finishing up our panel yeah um and then the whole Discovery cast came back, uh, stayed, and you were there. And that's when I, and then I uh, got to talk to you more face to face because yeah. before you were just at your table. That, um, that so moment, I remember that, this way more clearly than you might because for me, it that, was that moment in Al's <laughs> mind of, oh, I need to talk to everybody in this room. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, it was very it was very surreal. So back there we come back there and everyone's taking all their clothes off to put on discovery shirts. And yeah. so oh, right. <laughs> on stage. They're like, what's um, going on? What's going on? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, 
So it was, um, so that was really fun. Then yes, then we met at the Paley Center and I got to chat with you there. That was a good, that was a fun event. That was, that mm-hmm. was when we, um, I think CBS Global Consumer or something show. And so a lot of, a lot of your, your castmates were there at the show. Um, but we need to kind of know early on and say, hey, this is going to be a possibility that that this person wants to join us. It looks like Mary was really much involved. You gave me your contact info. And I'm sorry it takes so long, but that's just how long it takes. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I but I knew we were going to get there. And, but that and, makes sense because if you we, can't, we can't write a story around like Laurel's going to show up at the end of it two years from now if yeah. we don't know that. Like yeah, if, if, right. if, if, if two years <laughs> from now we say, hey, Mary, do you want to do this? And you're like, eh, nah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and you do have to have sometimes have plan B's. We're going through that right now. We're storing, yeah. you know, we're getting ready for our next arc. And it says, well, we've got this person we want to, to join us. I hope they'll want to be interested in three years from now. Yeah. So, <laughs> you have to, yeah, you have to li- live in the future. Or yeah, write in yeah. The future. I don't know how that works on, on TV, but that's how it works yeah. for us at least. <laughs> but I am just absolutely delighted that you joined us i'm absolutely delighted how much you've engaged with mm-hmm. us and, and just and, and and engage with me and and the, and the community so thank you as thank the you social media and... person for star trek i will love you forever because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you just keep sharing our stuff <laughs> I, do yeah. I, I, I do love it and and uh i'll just say it to your credit that um i go hard and i go or i don't i go hard i don't go home uh but only <laughs> people where i feel that the you know that the passion is really there and and being able to elevate um and celebrate those who worked hard and are passionate that's you know if if nothing else in my life that's what i want to be able to do um so it's it's just thrilling when that opportunity presents itself and i can go hard for for the good guys (laughs) (laughs) so speaking of the opportunity presenting itself you know you you talked to al a couple of times backstage at conventions there's got to be a part of your brain that's like okay i'm never going to hear from this guy again um (laughs) before before you got the sto call did you kind of think your time with laurel was over forever like you weren't going to come get the chance to come back to her yeah that's a i mean it's a great question well what it's a i really trusted that al was going to follow through (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> my bad because <laughs> uh, yeah the way it kind of timed out was when we had that last chat at, at Paley um, I believe the the second season it had certainly been filmed at that point yeah. if not aired yeah because um, the Paley Center visit was the they were showing off the Red Angel suit right yeah. Yeah. Line, so yeah yeah so so I definitely it was particularly lovely at that point in time to have <laughs> an awesome creator be like, we love your character and we want to keep moving her forward. You remember that time I said that I'm, I, that's really going to really going to happen. So that really was uh, very meaningful to me. Um, so I knew that was there and I did, I did have faith that it would, it would happen. <laughs> else. Anyway, the t- he gave me the, the, the year and then the year happened. Uh, yeah, 2021 yeah. is here. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is, it is interesting as, as we all know, they're uh, in a very different time now uh, than yeah. Laurel is in. So that was, of course, you know, that's bittersweet to say the least, uh, to, to have such an incredible arc for a character in two seasons. I mean, that's something that so often, um, even some of our best, uh, recurring roles don't get like the fact that she, even within the first season went from being in the shadows to claiming her, um, her place as a leader. Uh, and then of course the extension of that in the second season and then coming in Mm -hmm. on the clean in that finale oh just, god that was so really, cool <laughs> uh, I, i'm I, telling you oh go ahead no i was gonna say i've just I've, I've been the biggest klingon fan my whole life and i loved that whole fight scene but when you guys popped up it was just like i literally jump out of my seat arm pumping cheering yeah. moment <laughs> uh, me, me too it's so, i i had i had i pre-visioned in a way i remember sometime when we were just entering the second season and i knew that you know, Tyler and I were still working things out and trying to work together. And I didn't know anything about the plot. I swear to you, I was like, there's going to be, all I want is a calv- cavalry coming in moment <laughs> when all hope is lost. And like literally in the script, they say like the cavalry, or no, that's what Pike says. <laughs> oh, yeah. like, I remember reading it and being like, this is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> like, this, is, this is the Klingon entrance that I wanted to have. So um, yeah. And just that when all hope is lost moment yeah. and, it is very moving because uh, it shows both, I believe, the integrity of Laurel 
and the the strengthened relationship between the Federation and the Klingon Empire under her rule. Yeah. Uh, and that she's willing to sacrifice uh, for the greater good, yeah. um, which I love. Like, but she, he's like, oh, you brought some friends. And she's like, not the term I would choose, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's still a Klingon. Um, yeah. But just in, in, in answering your question, like, I, I celebrate that so much as such a gift. Um, but of course, because I love her so much, uh, I hope that people are inspired to keep giving her stories. And I know that they've also done that in the Aftermath comics. And, um, you know, it's, again, it's just very moving to me when anyone's inspired uh, to to create for her. So, you know, and, and as you know, with Trek, it's, these characters never go away. She yeah. will forever be part of who I am. It's got to be an interesting thing mentally. I've always wondered about this to go, like, you know, you're a, an actor working in LA, you're trying to find a job, and then you get, oh, I'm getting cast in Star Trek. And that doesn't come with yeah. just, like, a, it's a role for a TV show. That comes with, even if this thing doesn't work, this character will live on for the rest of time. <laughs> like, that's such yeah. a fascinating experience. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's very unique. And to be able to meet so many people who are... Uh, directly affected by something you've created like you know you get that with any sort of role as an actor hopefully but the fact that I get to actually go to specific locations where groups of people like want to talk about my character or the show that I'm a part of like that's yeah. so amazing and so <laughs> surreal and to get to like shake someone's hand or look them in the eye and just hear how something affected them directly it's 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 incredible yeah it's it's really awesome um so I want to dive into some fan questions really quick um well, we had one request from chat that I want to ask you before I forget because it's a great request um so I don't know do you know uh the whole joke of experience beige do you know what that is? <laughs> no. Okay. No worries. Uh, in the nineties, pretty, pretty esoteric. Yeah. In the in, in the nineties, there was a Star Trek TNG VHS board game, uh, and uh, they brought in Robert O'Reilly to play basically Gowron, but not Gowron. He was called uh -huh. something else, but he was in the Gowron makeup and costume uh -huh. and everything. Um, <laughs> and uh, whenever he wanted to punish a player, he would go. He would say, you know, you the red player, experience beige, uh, which is apparently some Klingon word for suffering uh and we gave the the line to robert at least three or four times in our episodes but somebody in chat asked if you would put on your your Lorel voice and tell us all to experience beige <laughs> <laughs> what's that full line i uh whatever whoever you want to direct it at and then just experience beige <laughs> b-i-j -B -I if that helps B -I -J. all right chat it's time to experience beige <laughs> <laughs> You've just made several nerds' lives, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay, so chat question or uh, fan questions. Um, literally everyone asked this, so I can't credit anyone. Um, but uh, how? So you know, when you were playing Lorel on the show, a lot of that three-hour makeup process was very helpful for getting into character. Mm -hmm. I imagine you know, getting your 3D printed face on. Um, <laughs> uh, to when you came back to do Lorel for STO, you did, you had to get back into her without doing any of that. Um, what was the process like to like return to that character without all the physical accoutrement? It it was actually kind of perfect because I had weirdly prepped for it in how I would rehearse my scenes and and lines uh, before the day of filming. I often worked with. Luckily, yeah, Shazad and Ken in particular near the beginning when we had all that Klingon, we would just get together mm. in someone's hotel room and, <laughs> and work out the scenes in English and then go back to Klingon and back and forth so that because oh, on man, the day... That's like doing a Shakespeare play, isn't it? Like you have to figure out what everything means. And then, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that is exactly. Like, I mean, my Shakespeare training, I was so grateful for because it certainly gave me a key in. And what's um, our dialect coach, Rio Nolan, is such a great... Um, what is what are the uh, she is very malleable in how she works works with individual actors. So she knew for me, oh, you have this Shakespeare background, this sort of stuff. So we had a certain uh, phonetic vocabulary and uh, just exactly she, we knew that we could work that way. Whereas Ken really liked to memorize all the sounds and then infuse the meaning afterwards. Like he oh, just yeah. really wrotely in his brain, and then Shazad was kind of in the middle, I think. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever knows. Oh. Uh, but, <laughs> but we all had different styles and different ways and Rhea worked with us all really well. But then we would get together uh, and and 
part of what I like to do was sentence by sentence, I would do the Klingon, like uh, example I often use is bichachmech yemosh, which is to conquer compromise. Like mm. that's to conquer bichachmech and then yemosh, compromise. So I would do that kind of sentence by sentence. I would say the English first in whatever order it actually was in and then the Klingon and then back and forth and back and forth. So anyway, so that was a lot of drilling. Uh, but then we would work the scenes. And then once I was speaking more English, like one of my favorite, when I first got to know Jane Brooke uh, with our scenes uh, in the first season, uh, we were in rooms right next to each other and we had just gotten our scripts. And I was like, would it be okay if we just ran lines? And uh, <laughs> so I had a lot of practice in f trying to be in Laurel's energy and emotional state without all of the prosthetics on top of it. Uh, and then I also... Uh, dubbed a lot of my uh, lines, particularly in the first season, because uh, there was some prosthetic stuff that was muffling the mic mm. uh, that they realized afterwards. So I had actually been in the booth a lot, uh, kind of getting back into her energy and being in her space without being fully uh, clothed and, and uh, rubbered. Um, <laughs> So, that phrasing? I, yeah, I know. Yeah, lots of. Uh, not everyone <laughs> talks about being with prosthetic or without. We can coin some terms. Uh, like, oh, so I, I um, see some. I see some chat here about people saying, "Oh my gosh, Mary, you still speak Klingon." I don't think anyone realizes how much uh -huh. Klingon, how proficient she is. <laughs> Probably the most proficient actor who's ever played a Klingon who actually speaks Klingon so. <laughs> so damn how much, well I, I was, that was going to be a follow-up question how much like how fluent are you in klingon now having done all of those scenes i i wish of course i'm a very uh a driven competitive person i wish <laughs> i was i was more fluent i wish i could really herald that i'm in a place where i what's great is i can read, can read uh, the, the text and pronounce it like i have the correlation oh, yeah. of symbol to sound so given i have where is it well, hold on i i, I need okay. to the where i know i have it somewhere <laughs> i've got my my klingon all my klingon books are somewhere oh, nice. here. oh i know where they are they're right over here um just just i'll get these grab these two um but i have the klingon way which i've never opened apparently <laughs> <laughs> never never not at all <laughs> um and then the dictionary nice. but what's really fun is you they have i mean the dictionary is so fun because they they have every pronunciation um of of each of the vowels and consonants and particularly with the vowels something that i in developing laurel's dialect i did um was each vowel has one sound in the klingon language so i tried to lean towards that sound as opposed to others uh that we have more of in in our english oh, cool. dialect or um, or American dialect, I guess you should say. Um, but like in the Klingon way, it's all these different Klingon phrases. So I'll go in here and go, Hovme Davan, you salute the stars. So, <laughs> um, but if someone started speaking Klingon to me, I don't think I uh, would know what they were saying. I knew, I would probably know it was Klingon. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's the fact that you can read it and we can give you a script and you can read it and we don't That's have to explain it to you. Awesome. I, no, no other actor has been able to do yeah. that. Yeah, because <laughs> we've, we've read, um, I've written Klingon dialogue for not the game, but for some stuff outside the game before. And yeah, you have to write the dialogue and then the pronunciation guide and then what it means so the actors can help. So that's amazing that you can just jump over all of that. Yeah, like four <laughs> constants in a row. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is funny some 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 phrases are like they flow beautifully and then sometimes you're like how does this sentence exist yeah. like it's not fair to anyone it's like all these glottal stops and then like <laughs> uh for uh the book we just wrote um the tales of the dishonored three uh i had um david from the Klingon language institute translate the cover for us and because of the way, like in English, it was the tales of the Dishonored Three as told to the Holy Scholars, Hol Scholars of Holy Bereth. But the way he had to translate it to make it work in Klingon was like the Dishonored Three, the tales of them as the scholars of Bereth wrote about that one time. Like it was just this yeah. really complicated, yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, well, it's you know, there's the joke about you haven't heard uh, Shakespeare until you've heard it in the original mm. Klingon, and I think part of that is that yeah, the the. Um, the syntax of the sentences is very Shakespearean or just very different, very yeah. ancient yeah. feeling and very heightened. 
uh, which which is fun that you know the persona that we come to know so much in the in TNG and Deep Space Nine uh, is um, is very in line with how the Klingon language is actually spoken. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Okay, well since we're talking about Shakespeare and the original Klingon, I I really liked this question from Crunchy Pirate. Uh, so the next Chancellor in canon. As far as we know, um, and we don't know for sure, but the next the next chancellor we know of is Gorkon um, after Lorel. Uh, they wanted to know if, in your personal headcanon, uh, did did Gorkon kill Lorel uh, to take that position, or did she step down and retire somewhere uh, just, to just, hand off the just... chancellor? Or just died, you know. Yeah, died or just died. Yeah, or, just or died have... in battle or something. Yeah. I mean, exactly. yeah. Well, what's I guess what that's the, the the better way to ask that question is what do you think the end of Lorel's reign was like? Yeah. Well, I I I love this question and I'm glad it came up because certainly something I thought even sort of thinking before I knew she was going to become chancellor, but once I knew that the finale of the first season was le ending in her becoming you know, a scene leader, someone who would be in the history books. But knowing we were in this earlier timeline, I was like, how interesting. Why does no one talk about Laurel? We know, you know, yeah. that it's because it wasn't written. But I was like, this is so, and I think very, um, very accurate to our own history. A lot of female mm. rulers do get written out of it. Uh, Habchetsu is a, a, a female pharaoh, not not a queen, like not Cleopatra, queen, like she legitimately, because her son was too young, basically became the female pharaoh and presented herself in an androgynous or male leaning way using all of the, um, the icono iconography <laughs> of, of, a, of a male pharaoh. And uh, the rumor that was, or the history uh, that I read that was intriguing, makes a good story, even if it's not true, is that after her death, someone destroyed like all of the images uh, of her. Um, and I had always been really intrigued by that story. So the second uh, Laurel became chancellor, I was like, is this a Hepchetsuit situation? <laughs> is that, and so I was like, I, I was just very excited storytelling wise. Like there's so much potential here of like, why this this leader is forgotten and is it because of a certain thing that she did at some point later in her career <laughs> <laughs> as chancellor that made a certain you know and we you know a cole shaw uh like character who couldn't stand that this woman was in power so i don't know i hadn't thought about gorkon actually killing me um <laughs> that's interesting uh because I got to imagine there's some transfers of power in Klingon history that are like, it's still a fight and one person dies, but it's like a very friendly, like, let's see if you can yeah. surpass me, like anime rivalry kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's, it's, it, that's, it's very intriguing and, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'd love, I'd love to, I'd love to hear some fanfic about it. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> or, or, yeah, I, I um, for the for the record, I'd love to include that in Stowe, but I don't think we could ever touch it because we may see it one day on screen and we yeah. don't know. So I, I, I'm just keeping my all of my everything crossed for Lorel to pop up on Strange New Worlds. So you know, <laughs> that was one of the questions we got the most, and I'm like, she couldn't answer that even if she knows, yeah, guys. Yeah. No, we can't. <laughs> We're not. Yeah, you heard it first here on Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on our on our Twitch stream at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. We're announcing yeah. this. Also, CBS has canceled our license. <laughs> <laughs> and the snipers are coming. Uh, okay. Um, uh, Darkblade JK wanted to know uh, what was your most memorable blooper on the set of Discovery? Oh, <laughs> what's great is there's so many. Uh, it's like I, I say that the level of intensity that's on screen is paralleled by the level of goofiness often. Like, not. I say that, but I also say that a lot, most of my days are being up in those big chairs uh, yeah, in between yeah. takes where I can't move. I have ice packs on my wrists and a fan blowing in my face oh and my I'm God. just trying to breathe and I'm drinking smoothies and, you know, it's, it's you're like a Godzilla suit actor, but with more lungs. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um, that is most of my days on the days that I'm working, but there are moments in between takes and, uh, I particularly uh, like to talk about in the in the second season that first uh, point of light episode. Um, Shazad and Ken and I had gotten to Toronto. I would say 
like a week or so before we started filming for fittings we were basically there for like a month um and i used to call that like it was like klingon summer camp i said <laughs> um because uh, we would we would run lines and then we would hang out. We go to dinner. We get you were all staying in the hotel, and uh, so we were just in this very like buddy buddy mode, uh, which I already very much had with them from the first season onwards. Um, That's awesome. But That's awesome. there were a few times, particularly that final week of filming, we were doing the fight scene and the scenes around the fight scene uh, in in my garden, and. Uh, <laughs> Ken, there, there was a certain point early on when Ken was in costume where we were like, you kind of look like a really evil Santa Claus. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and of course he went with that and just, you know, yes and the hell out of it. And he would, at a certain point, I think it was, we had we filmed the fight for about eight hours on that Friday. It was the last thing that we filmed and then we did the, the last few scenes after that um, when Giorgio comes in. And so... Shazad and I were zonked like we had just been going and going and going so we were in that kind of delirious state and I was just recovering from a sinus infection oh, it God. was all really fun and great <laughs> um and at a certain point we're setting up shots and Ken just starts going what do you want for Christmas <laughs> <laughs> and he kept going to Shazad and Shazad be like well I don't know blah, blah, blah. you know just like playing like the little kid and and uh and then I um my prosthetic particularly in the second season was even thinner than it was in the first so if i opened my mouth too wide or any or laughed too hard as it were um it would really mess up the prosthetic so i had to basically like laugh but not move oh my God. mouth I just had to be like, like literally <laughs> was just going like this like to indicate that i was being entertained I um, wish that someone had video of Lorel doing that <laughs> because that sounds what, amazing. <laughs> what I'm really hopeful for, because they did have the B-roll camera uh, oh, there nice. that day, and I already when when I did uh, the ready room sort of thing for that episode, they did show some clips. So I think <laughs> I think there's actually a lot of documented footage. We just have to like find it. Because uh, I think it was also that thing we were like, you know, a molecule observed. We were like, oh, the camera's on. <laughs> like, oh. Um, so uh, I, one other on that, I think it was that day or the or the day prior. But another thing we got tickled about was that um, uh, <laughs> one of the lines Coleshaw has to say to Lorel, you know, he says uh, she, uh, the English is she's a whore that lies with a human. Ooh, uh, ooh. And but in Klingon, the word for that is like ratwe bratwa or something. Like it's like a four, it's like very long. And so Ken was trying really hard to make it sound like a real throwaway, like mean thing. And he's like, she is a bratwe shot wa who lies with a human. And so Shazad and I, between takes, like he would he would say it. And then if whenever we cut, he'd be like, what did he just call you? And I'd be like, I don't know. What did he, what did he say? And then Ken would be like, no, I called you. I called you a whore. That's that's that was the word. And then and we'd be like, no, I I don't understand what. Uh, and you know, we just like tease him, and then he'd like turn to the guards and be like, no, a whore. You know, like you know, woman lies with a man. Like trying to explain it. And like, the poor the poor extras whore, are like, don't like, move, don't make a sound. <laughs> yeah, just just goofing around and uh, finding the art because there's such Klingons are so archetypal. I think we just love to play the comedic side of the archetype mm -hmm. like again, if it were on um uh like uh, in a disney movie or like whatever <laughs> whatever that version of that character would be um very very laurel fun. the That's disney princess now i kind of want to see that <laughs> Oh my how, god! How much of that fighting? Uh, how how did? Because that's actually what I'm. You know, that was that yeah. was a pretty fun fight to watch. And yeah, it, I don't remember. You didn't have a battle. You had Mechleth, right? Or a Mechleth? I had, I actually had these two, and now I can't remember the name of them. But they are actually special chancellor weapons. Oh. That, uh, um, <laughs> that 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 the reaction was Al going. How do we get the, the art of these so I can put them in the okay, game? Well, do that well, now. Definitely, because I know that. Um, yeah, they Mario. They weren't just regular mechleths, do you know? There's a the little no, hand they knives. Weren't. I think, honestly, I think if you even like Googled like Chancellor, Klingon Chancellor weapons, I know Mario, yeah. the prop, our prop master, he posted the images of it and said what the name was. I just hmm. don't have it at the top of my head. Um, but they were a little, they're just like a little bit longer. They're kind of as if they were 
it's like a, a bat list split in two. Okay. Um, right. sort of thing. And we're on it. We're on it. Yep. We're on it. <laughs> so on it. We'll get you. We'll get you, you. We'll get you your weapons for the next update. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, um, but yeah, working on that that fight, we. I mean, again, this role has been such a dream in so many ways, and I am very much uh, into women fighting. Oh, mm. my screen just disappeared. Sorry. Oh <laughs> there no. We go. Okay. You. I, you were gone, and now you're back. Oh, I good. can see you now. Um, and I was super excited. I had uh, been able to do some fighting in, in the first season. Jane and I had that fight, and then oh, yeah. I got beat up by Michelle Yeoh, which the whole time I was going, <laughs> it's an honor. It's an honor. Thank you so much. <laughs> please beat me up more please please um please ma'am but she, and she's, she was so awesome and she's such a, a pro obviously and uh that was it was you know you still have to react and stuff uh it is it is still a dance uh yeah. of, and uh that was great but this yeah this was definitely the most epic fight <laughs> and uh i'm a big fan of the uh red red uh red room throne room fight in uh the last jedi oh god yes and, yes and uh, when I read it, uh, th that our fight in the third episode on the page, I'm like, oh, it's kind of like the it's kind of like the red room fight. <laughs> like, you know, it's like these two people, and then they're gonna like work together to get the back. Oh, you know. <laughs> so I was very excited about that. And uh, but yeah, we didn't. We filmed all of the other scenes in the two weeks prior, and the fight was on that last week. And um, yeah, I woke up that Monday with a sinus infection oh, and i remember we, i wasn't working that day and i was like no 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 <laughs> and i like like spicy food and went over there was a great um like homeopathic place nearby I'm just i just huffed a vapor rub yeah. as hard as i can I mean, exactly <laughs> just anything and everything two hot showers all this stuff uh and i was able to clear it out pretty well but we had a uh, fight rehearsal for six hours that tuesday um and that and uh yeah, I have a, I had a, a wonderful uh, stunt double, Nicole, um, but much to her chagrin, I was pretty uh, set on doing as many of my stunts <laughs> as possible, uh, kind of throughout the show. Um, and obviously there were certain flips and stuff where, um, like when Tyler beat me up when he escapes yeah. in the, the episode, that obviously I, I allowed her to do because I knew that she, she had that training more than I did. Um, but uh, we did that that whole rehearsal, and it definitely cleared out my sinuses. I was sweating it all out, um, and uh, I was so jazzed. Again, I was like two handed fight. I'm doing this whole thing. It's so great. And then, uh, then on Friday when we were filming it, there were a few moments where they were like, "Can you just go a little bit more with your stabs? Like, can you make that a little more?" And I was like, "Sure, sure." And then I realized all of my main stabs are with my left hand, and I'm right handed. <laughs> <laughs> I had on that Tuesday, I was like, great, great. I'll just stab. I'll do the thing. And I didn't realize that it was mainly done with my slightly weaker hand. So I was like, oh, well, um, but, but it was awesome. And I, uh, there was, uh, only one take where Laurel is in the background of a Tyler shot where uh, Nicole came in because they really wanted to give me just a break. Cause it was eight hours. Yeah. And again, yeah. I'm highly, uh, motivated and competitive to say the least. <laughs> and, uh, I remember, they were like, okay, Mary, we're just going to have Nicole step in this thing. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Like, I'm like, that's starting to cry. Cause I'm like, oh, I can do it. I, she's great. I just, and they're like, Mary, this isn't about your performance. It's just that you're literally going for like five hours and we want you to sit down. And I was like, okay, thank you. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm really you Because you, probably, you probably didn't rehearse at all in anything like the prosthetics, I'd imagine. So just getting into that fight, um, with that stuff on must have been a crazy <laughs> it yeah it it really is because yeah i rehearsed i mainly in like in the heels that i had but it, <laughs> the, there's a joke i mean doug makes this joke too just you know the ginger rogers like backwards in heels mm -hmm. um sort of thing and i was like yeah i'm backwards in heels literally backwards in heels in a dress with two <laughs> with two <laughs> weapons covered in prosthetics and a giant wig and <laughs> There was ash falling. Oh God, that's right. <laughs> I remember Tunde saying to our direct, amazing director, he was like, "Oh yeah," and on Kronos when it rains, it's like ash falling. And I was like, "Yeah," uh -oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm on uneven cobblestone. Um, but it's, I mean, it's it was awesome, and and I loved also narratively the choreography. Um, you know, 
you know, Shazad and I kind of split off and had our own fright fights, but I loved that they staged it so that he gets stabbed and is in jeopardy. And I finish off my guy and go in and stab the guy that's getting him. So, um, little things like that, yeah. because we're so pre-programmed, uh, to just be like, oh, what? And then the guy comes in at the last minute. Yeah, and yeah. You, I just really appreciate it. It's subtle. You're, you might not even notice it uh, if you're watching it, but little things like that. And I, I know um, the art choreographers, they do that a lot. Like in yeah, a lot yeah. of the fight scenes, they really are so um, diplomatic, I guess you would say, <laughs> and are, yeah. are just, they really let let the awesome yeah, awesome so fighters do their fighting. Well, well and it's also, is, Lorel is no damsel. Right. I was going to say, it, it, <laughs> makes, it, makes, it honestly makes more no. sense in story for Ash to be saved by, by Lorel than any other yeah. way around. Yeah. <laughs> one, one of my big pet peeves is in, uh, one of my big pet fees and superheroes is that that always the 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 woman superhero when she uses her powers too much she passes out it's yeah much. right you never see the male yeah. superhero use do something and pass out right right so this invisible woman makes it too big of a force field and then and she can't handle it anymore, so <laughs> or captain really marvel doesn't trip. have that drawback and then the internet tries to make her pass out but anyway <laughs> <laughs> internet. oh internet oh internet <laughs> uh okay um let's see um i think we've answered all of the fan questions here uh so i want to show you a little bit of your stuff in the game if that's okay yeah, all right uh let me oops uh okay there's i like a professional <laughs> community manager and interviewer that i am i remembered to set you guys up in the guest panel but not here one second <laughs> uh window capture So you've seen some of these, or I think most, if not mm -hmm. all of the scenes, but you haven't really seen the gameplay. Yeah. Like a, lot of, a lot of the stuff that you recorded wasn't just in cutscenes. It's actually just mm -hmm. talking to her in what we call contact dialogues. Mm -hmm. So you can, the uh, so players can choose what they want to ask and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're going to dive in here. Um, we're playing as my main character uh, and we have just gone through click on purgatory and gotten onto the barge of the dead uh, to get our way onto Grethor. And I wanted to show this off because I love what our, uh, our level designers and animators did where, you know, instead of just random NPC interactions, there's all these demons torturing Klingons going on around here. Uh, this this guy has already knocked somebody down. This one's my favorite. Just, oh, wow. <laughs> just hanging out. Just hanging out. Yeah, Grethor is Look just so me. fun because it's like, we all have images of the hell, but you're like, but Klingon hell? Yeah, <laughs> what would the Klingon version of hell be? Uh, somebody, uh, someone at some point was like, why would Klingons hate this? This is like everything they've ever wanted. <laughs> uh, I love these gates of Grethor. Al, the, did, were the gates? The gates. Oh yeah, thanks, Jula. Um, <laughs> were the um, gates something from canon or did we design those? No, no, that, there's, that's from uh, from the episode um, Barge of the Dead from Voyager. Okay, that's what um, I thought. So, so when, um, like and this is kind of, cloak. the story is kind of um, uh, it's using, leveraging that canon that was established where, where uh, Milana, she goes into, she brings herself to the brink of death because I don't remember why she wanted to do it or why she needed to do it. She was trying to prove something and she found out that her mother was in Grethor and and she wanted to give herself up um he'll, I'll, her mother was in grethor because of her sins because she didn't embrace being klingon mm. and so we never go inside grethor but we're on the barge of the dead and we pull and she rolls up to the gates and then she wakes up out of it um and so uh, and and so she decides she's going to give herself her soul up to save her mother which is kind of the inspiration for what happens here um, as you see here, that we actually see while we're in Grethor, we see different types of Klingons. We yeah, see... I was just about to say I love that. Yeah. There's Discovery, TOS, and TNG Klingons all in here. There's also a Kelvin Klingon in here too. Oh, really? They're slightly Neat. different from the Kel from cool. JJ verse. Yeah. I'm just skipping through this uh, because it's uh, it's a cool part of the mission, but not necessarily re relevant to what we're doing. But this is are you us. able to share? Are you able to share audio? Uh, audio oh, you guys side. can't hear it. Uh, if yeah. you click on the stream, you're not hearing audio come through. I'm on the stream. I'm, I'm seeing this, the image. I'm seeing the, I'm seeing the gameplay. I see both everybody here. Hmm. But I hear no audio. Is anyone in the audience? Can the audience hear? is hearing the audio. Yeah, I, I can't. You can hear audio. Uh, okay. I, I thought it would. I thought Discord would transfer it. It usually does. 
Um, so there may be a setting you need to change in Discord. Uh, sorry about that. I didn't realize that would happen. Can you hear anything? Um, I was going to call you Laurel. Mary? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I cannot hear the sound of the game, no. Okay. okay. Um, let's see. Uh, there's probably... Let's see. Let me look at Discord. This might mess everything up, but um, if you... Let's see. Uh, if I you right-click on the stream window, see if there's something like... What's, what's the um, audio window? so like you know where the stream is in the like if you're looking at the the video call oh just, just where you click okay. to where you click yeah. on the stream i yeah. see stream volume it says 70 percent well so, hmm um, it's not muted i'm guessing you are the stream i can probably yeah if i turn it down i can't hear you okay what is causing that hold on let me try something here oh i know why i know why i know why you can't hear it okay i am going to this is going to mess everything up, but that's okay, because <laughs> I'll unmess it up very quickly. Uh, uh, I'm going to make it so you can't see me, but you can see this lovely uh, this lovely game. And now you should probably hear it. Let me know. Um, if you click yes. on the stream. Yes. Now Mary, can, Mary can you hear it? Um, I, just, I, need, I think I need to click on the stream again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I heard the fire crackling, and now it went away. Oh, because I no. clicked away. <laughs> well, right, when I click away, it stops being. Let me know if you can hear it, Mary. I can no longer see the question, the, the audience questions, but that's yep. fine. I can see the game is much bigger now, and I can hear the audio. I don't. Um, it's it's it's. There's not much audio happening though, right? No, there's just there's just fire at this point, okay. moment, and a little bit of like a. Yeah. Dur, 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 dur. Not a thing. Oh yeah, I, I hear it. Yeah. Okay, great, cool, great. All nice. right. So anyway, we're running around talking to as many Klingons as we can find about uh, looking for trying to find you. Yeah. Ah, TOS Klingon. So, if you've been watching, come Mark talk. Enough. And Jula. Like I said, I'm just going through this part quickly, um, but we will pause for the important things. I love that this guy's like in male pattern baldness, TOS Klingon. I know, it's very depressing that in 400 years we haven't solved that. <laughs> okay, uh, so this is one of the sons of Nun who were Jaula's group. Actually, all group. four of them. Oh, it's all four of them, that's right. Yes, who were Jaula's group until uh, they betrayed her. And uh, we're, we fought them one at a time in the game before, but now we're going to fight them for reals. But, um... Um, if you were paying attention, if players are paying attention when you're walking through here, um, these four sons of Nun start following you in the background very oh, quietly. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, I wish start... I'd known about that. That's don't, awesome. Oops. Don't die. Oh, no, there died. we go. <laughs> <laughs> Just make yourself invincible. We don't. I, I can't. It's on live. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's live. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're playing on live. Uh, but that's okay. We'll just run over there again. So they start. So so they start following you slowly, and then a fifth one starts following you, and that's that's actually Lorel. So we don't know who that fifth cloaked yeah, person that is. Cloaked who's person is fighting you. alongside us now. Um, oh. So fighting with a sword like a true Klingon. Ooh. <laughs> Get back here. Uh. No, thank you. I'll take your health. Oh, you're going. You're going on full, full, uh, full Klingon, huh? Oh yeah. Fight, That's fight with the sword. Fight with the sword. <laughs> get up close. That's how I play. Although I do have other things I do, like this lovely agonizer field. Uh oh, stream stream pooped out for me. Oh, did it? No, it's fine. Okay. All right. Gonna hunt down. Oh, and there you are. We don't know who she is yet. We don't know who she is yet, but yes, there you are. <laughs> and uh -oh, this is just awesome. Go. Was the uh, the swinging of the Beckleth Weston thing, or did you come oh, up yeah, with that? Oh, it's all Weston. Yeah. Oh, there she is! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So good. You know what? I feel in this... Um, animation as well that she feels that there's a, a merry quality to her that i see more, more here almost than in the prosthetic if that makes sense like i i think it 
I don't have to I, worry I, about the prosthetics falling off. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and and we can animate your face just a little bit more than you know yeah. poor Laurel's face. But it, to it's, be it's interesting that you say that. I mean, this this is all our animator, right? So yeah. one that is just studies people's movements and yeah. really makes you know makes them very personal. Uh, it's just him. He just has an eye for it. his name's Western Pierce, and he does He's all amazing. our animation. Anything that he, he's the puppeteering, the animation, the cutscenes, all of that. Um, so he does. He captures that essence really, really wonderfully. Yeah. yeah, and and I think our character artist too did a, a paid special attention to. They usually, sure. uh, they usually do. Um, you know, a lot of reference of both what the actor looks like as well as what they look like in the prosthetics to put together. It's the, a lot uh, of online stalking. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely put put enough stuff, weird videos of myself talking out there. So. <laughs> uh, well, let's see what you have to say. Sister of Takuma. Weston also does all of these custom, the uh, the facial animations of these scenes. Power in House Mokai, your conflict with your brother, and your bold crusade against the Federation during the war. I love saying Federation in the context. Federation. You have made and ended a great many enemies. Many of them now dwell within these halls. Are you one of those people who like watches I likes watching I yourself perform, or is this is it weird to listen to what yourself? I, do not know is I, true. I will say with Laurel, because she's so distinct from me, I'm able to enjoy uh, her as a character. Like I it it's I'm in her when I'm when I'm saying her lines or when I was filming on the show, but she, I'm able to make that differentiation and just appreciate uh, her for who she is. I, I think that's a good cue. You've made such a character. You've established a lot of things because I noticed in the chat in there. I said someone said something along the lines of, um, uh, "It's so weird not to be able not to hear Mary talk without all the synthesizing." And I said, yeah. "That's that's Mary. Yeah. <laughs> She's the synthesizer." Um, yeah. I, I I think we may add a little reverb, but very little. It's just mm -hmm. largely your voice, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, um, and I know that you and Reka are friends, and you like you established this kind of I don't know Slovakian accent of some sort <laughs> yeah. for her, and 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 so Reka picked that up in her character. We'll see yeah. her later in the later in this episode. Yeah. But that's also interesting. I hadn't even thought about that because as an actor, when you're watching yourself, you see yourself. But if you're in, you know, three feet of prosthetics, you probably don't see yourself when you're watching yeah. Discovery back. Yeah, I I, I feel, yeah, there's a. Yeah, it's just such a, a wonderful distinction that I'm able to just, in, yeah, enjoy her and feel for her. Why seek um, to restore me from the dead? When and uh, what was I? Oh, oh, to the accent thing I wanted to say too, because yeah, we did develop it very, very persnicketedly. Uh, uh, um, uh, <laughs> no, that's not uh, with with regards to all the sound changes, like I said. But funnily enough, when we were developing it and we start filming. Uh, it was the summer that the first Wonder Woman came out, and I go oh. to the movie, and I, I've already been speaking in an English, uh, in, in English with my accent for at least a few episodes, and I'm like, oh my god, is Laurel from Themyscira? Like, <laughs> I mean, kind of. House Mokai is kind of the Amazons of the Klingon world. Yeah, and I, it like blew my mind because obviously I hadn't, I did not make that choice deliberately. But then I'm like, oh my god, Robin Wright's talking like the Rel. <laughs> now, so now delighted. I need that Wonder Woman uh, Lorel awesome. crossover. Oh my god. Uh, Al, make that happen for me. Uh, sure, <laughs> we'll, uh, uh, we'll sign Get Gal, right on though. that. No, yeah. No problem. I was like, uh, Diana, Diana, you must understand. I don't care how to feel about it. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> that, that sound you hear is a thousand fan fictions starting at once. Yeah. <laughs> it is actually uh, funny, though, certainly in this, uh, uh, in, in this new uh, film iteration. They are, there are a lot of parallels to um, their journeys in, in, in love and loss. And uh, I remember I definitely played that soundtrack a lot for the rest of the, the first season. The Wonder Woman that, soundtrack? The Wonder Woman theme is so friggin' dope. Like, oh, yeah. it's, just... it's my ringtone, actually. Nice! Yeah, it's like an electric cello. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, so I wanted to ask you about this bit because this was something we, you know, we had to explain why Laurel would be in Grethor. And so Al um, uh, came up with this cool idea that she, you know, sort of like um, uh, Balana had wanted to do, had exchanged herself for Valk. Um, what were your thoughts on that, you know, particular twist to her story? It, I loved it. It felt so in line with what really drew me to Laurel. Like I said, like w when we were working on that role I, I, uh, in the first season, even though I knew the general arc of her journey, there was a, well, I'll tell the most brief version of the story is that um, there was, no one had said in that fourth episode that Voke and Laurel were going to fall in love, that big episode where we get to know them and they work together. There was hints of it. We had the, you know, shall we uncouple moment. So it was, <laughs> you know, it was innately there that something might be going on between the two of them, but it was something that Shazad and, and Tunde, uh, our director, we kind of found there and i remember the night that it really hit me in one of the scenes we were working on when i came back home or to the hotel i like took a hot shower was cleaned off and then i just started crying because i knew we knew at that point shazad was going to end up being tyler and falling in love with burnham and i was like mm, probably not going to work out for laurel <laughs> like, <laughs> i don't think this is going to end well for her romantically so as a very like you know um just, just listening to Lincoln Park in her bedroom, writing yeah, yeah, his exactly. name over and over in her notebook. Yeah. <laughs> Being the other girl is definitely not like a foreign experience to me. So like, I was like, oh, this is going to break my heart, but in the best way. Uh, so I loved that. That doesn't define Laurel's experience as a character, but it is a part of it. And I think like, again, as a, as a strong independent woman who is, you know, really happy to own her power and take her space, I still am like, vulnerable and have my heart broken you know whether it be platonically or romantically or just globally um and i just love that i could carry that with me because it resonated with who i am as a human and uh the fact that sacrifice for the greater good is this theme that just recurs and recurs and recurs for her uh so this choice to have um her make this further sacrifice for vogue because a driving force for her in the latter half of the season for me was the guilt that she felt. She had promised Voke she would bring him back and she just underestimated the power of humanity yeah. and yeah. that he would be so drawn into the to into love um, with the humans. So she felt a responsibility for Voke's Klingon soul, which is why she tried to do the death whale when she did the surgery. Um, and then for her to find out that, you know, it was kind of what she feared is that he wasn't able to go to Stovacor, that uh, it made complete sense to me that she would make the choice to further sacrifice herself since she was the one that convinced him to do it in the first place. <laughs> in your, in your headcanon, do you think Laurel and Valk ever found each other again, or do you think that was that was it? The, she made the sacrifice, she called, she called him dead, and that never saw him again? Yeah, well, to that, in, in the moment... So when she does do that death wail... To me, that was her believing that Voke was gone forever and that only Tyler would remain. Mm -hmm. But then she is taken by surprise in the finale when he speaks Klingon to her and still retains those those memories. That is something she did not anticipate. So her whole journey from that point on is she knows it's not truly her Voke. And, you know, she says it um, in um, in the the 12th episode, in the second season, uh, um, in the Valley of the Shadows to to Tyler. You know that you're in love with burnham and uh i was in love with Vogue, and that is not who you are so i think lorelle and tyler are able to have a certain level of allyship um with a sort of i mean Vogue is this ephemeral entity that like doesn't quite exist um but i think for her she had to embrace that any physical form of Vogue no longer existed for her. Um, well, there's still Mirror Vogue. <laughs> there is still Mirror Vogue. The revolution, he was right? a, he was a nice guy. Yeah, he yeah. was very nice. He, he was. Very nice. Yeah, that would be that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the way you put it that that she hadn't counted on the power of humanity, the power of human love. I actually never really thought of it that way. That, mm -hmm. that 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 message i don't know i i missed that i guess but i, I like that i just i looked at it more i guess scientifically biologically that it just went yeah. wrong but i like that <laughs> take on it a lot yeah 
Uh, Al, when you were writing this, in your mind, do Valk and Tyler have separate afterlifes? Because they're technically kind of separate people. Uh, that's something I was curious about. Um, I honestly hadn't considered that, and and this level of detail, I I, I wouldn't want to give too much credit to myself. This is, you know, this is, they my my directions are usually on the high level of this the story to go. We want to we want Laurel to be rescued from from here, and then the first question that everyone had is like, why is she in Grethel? It's like, well, <laughs> yeah. you know, she did something. She did something noble. We'll figure it out. Um, and then we all went and we figured it out together. But it it, it came pretty pretty uh, pretty organically that that. Uh, we just did a Bolana Torah. She sacrificed herself. Well, who did she sacrifice? Well, oh, okay. With his boke. And mm -hmm. that maybe why couldn't why is he in hell? What did he do bad? Oh, maybe he's just bad. He just went there because he gave up being Klingon. I don't remember yeah. who said that. Maybe that was Paul who suggested that, our, our writer. Um uh, I don't know if we ever considered any further whether or not that he has two souls and that there's a Klingon soul that went to Grethor and then that 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 Tyler went to heaven, to human heaven. Um would uh yeah. I, I I don't I don't know. I would if you pushed me, I probably would say no. There's just it's just one soul, two minds in one soul. And his yeah. soul went to went to Grethor and then was able to go to Stovacor because of Lorel. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really yeah, it's just a, it's an interesting question because I think part of like, you know, like the 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 Klingons are so spiritual, uh, which I feel like you illuminate here in such a great way and for House Mokai and Laurel, you know, to do this operation, you know, knowing that it's something that is dangerous in that regard. Like, I, I just love the, the the layers of that um, in in wh why humans, or in this case, Klingons, why we make choices um, and that it really was a huge risk to take, um, but it felt like the only thing they could do to, you know, hopefully keep Takuma's vision alive. Yeah, that's that's awesome. All right, I'm gonna keep Clayton. going on this. <laughs> and so, I came here and bargained with Declar for his release. Al, we need to write the scene where Lorel goes to, like, even if it's just a fiction blog, we need to write the scene where Lorel storms into Grethor and demands Vok's soul. Sure. That just, that's gotta happen. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> this is why. <sighs> We do a lot of, uh, I guess Mike does most of it, and parses it out to some of the other writers in our in our company to do other stories that are backstories that don't make it into the game. So, sure, that's we could do we could do that story. Um, they're just you know for our blog. Yeah, so be fun. The stairs beyond those doors lead to Feklar's hall. All right, let's go see Klingon the Klingon Devil. So I always thought because it's the Fakiri. I always thought it was Fekir, not Feklar. Uh, so that's Worf, interesting. To Worf me. specifically calls it out. It's the only time that he's seen me in that one episode of TNG. He says, "You are not Feklar." Well, it. there we go. And that is so. It is canon. And so, um, I think there is some typos and some scripts because it is because the confusion between the lowercase L and capital I yeah. for Fekiri and Feklar. And so, I think he probably was Fekir. And Worf said it as Feklar, and so just it's Feklar now. So, <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, so. <laughs> now, funny that... trivia. That's also Mary. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I could do it. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> uh... I, I, I think I saw someone had noted that in the chat too, but I love the um, uh, the upside down to crow for. Oh that yeah, thing on civil. Yeah, so good. That 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 is that is from Voyager when when yeah. Delana goes there. That's his. Uh, yeah. Such a, I, I, what I love right now is chat is trying to argue about whether you pronounce it Fakiri or Fakliri, but they're they're just typing it out each time and using a lowercase <laughs> l and an uppercase i, so no one can tell what anyone's arguing for. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh. And that is why there is a confusion there. So. Ah, okay. Apparently, in the Sword of Kales, Worf calls them the Fakiri. So that's where yeah, we got going. Fakiri. Hey, sure. It's all about Dorn. Dorn, Dorn made this, you know, made a canon, so we yep. do what Dorn said there. So. <laughs> um, it's, Whatever it's despite, Dorn says goes. Despite what, what scripts or memory alpha might say, it's just, it's the. Uh, 
it's what the actors say make it canon there's um if uh, for the players out there I, I know i watch a few people play this episode and take a moment after this fight to go look over look over the uh the edge you know, over the edge into the lava and see all the spirits coming out of the lava and things and so there's a lot of fun there's a lot of detail in this map that to be appreciated there was a fun bit that nick put in the other grethor mission where there's in some of the fire pits you can just see klingons like writhing in the flames yeah there's some klingons burning in the fires so <laughs> makes me happy <laughs> Typical, typical. <laughs> There's actually another story, Mary, that takes place here that's only a Klingon only story where you go and fight the different uh, specters of cowardice and dishonor and treachery. It's a very deep, dives really deep into their mythology. But uh, yeah. go back here. It's super, it's super neat, too, because when you start this mission as a Klingon, then uh, you get to be like, oh, Grethor? Yeah, I've been there before. <laughs> Grethor, we were That's there last week. <laughs> <laughs> Just drive on by. Yeah. Well, here's the trade, Jula. She takes a breath in our hand, in our head. She's thinking about her vision, and she thinks this is what she needs to do. Love, love Robert O'Reilly's gallon. Oh God, he's so good. So great, and he's such a delight as a human. He is. So I, I did an interview with him and JG last year that I can only call an interview in name because it was just the two of them riffing for an hour while yeah. I tried to get a word <laughs> in edgewise. <laughs> I love that. I know, uh, I love it as a duo. I I, one, I think it was maybe that Vegas um, where we hung out at some point, but I crashed one of their Klingon panels together. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, I literally happened to be walking by, and I think Yasmin uh, saw me and was like, Hey, do you want to go crash that panel? I was like, Sure. <laughs> and they were very. That's, that's always so fun to have the actors crash other actors' panels. Oh, yeah. I mean, the the love audience it. absolutely loves that. Love, yeah. Love, yeah. Love that. <laughs> so. And it's, uh, it's so easy to do in STLV. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, uh, Everybody's hanging out, yeah. yeah. This line from Galron when he says it's better to spend an eternity with in hell than be, than be alone in in the void, something of that effect. That's actually a line from Tony Todd, and when uh, and when when he's playing Kern and he can't join Klingon, so he's trying to get a job on Deep Space Nine because his house is his house is. Uh, house is disgrace so he goes and kills himself says why you kill yourself you're just gonna go to grethor because you're suicide so it's better to send an eternity in Klingon and in, in hell and grethor with other klingons than to be you know be away from klingons here on deep space nine effectively mm -hmm. so we pulled that line is basically an homage to tony todd's line because everyone himself. who works on this game is the biggest star trek nerd i've ever met <laughs> everyone that, uh that, this is... that, that one will definitely go credit to paul i believe yeah who, who did that so so this is my favorite part of the mission. It's like, okay, so we get to leave, but oh, Fakir but or Feklar betrayed us. Of course he did. I gotta switch to a gun here. It's a, very, it's, it's a, it's a it's, hotel California. You, like, yeah. There's no, there's no fighting getting into hell, but you, now gotta, you gotta get out. Your way out. It's, you can check in any time you like, but you can never leave. So, so now the fighting begins. Oh, no. okay. I'm just firing off into nothing here. Don't mind me. <laughs> And it, it, yeah, I know that this is Grethor, but it's not Klingons if there aren't flames, right? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I always remember that on set, too, particularly when we're on Kronos in the second season, where it'd be like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of flames happening. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what we do. There's, we set things I, on fire and we kill things. Whoa, what happened? Yeah. I, I have a, it's a silly just not story, because we have a, you know, I adore him, and he's a wonderful friend. And uh, but he has been able to be a Klingon without being in prosthetics far more than I have. <laughs> and there was one point when we're, um, you know, presenting the D7, that whole bit, and uh, they had had the flames, you know, somewhat uh, in front of the camera, so it looked like that. But then when they flipped the shot around, they needed to have them really big so that the, it looked like we were standing by a fire pit. And when they turned it all up. Um, it was it was really hot and really intense, and so I was like, "Oh, it's a bit hot, it's a bit hot." And I I literally am in like a lava cave covered in prosthetics, and I can't move. And I just like slowly turned to him, and I was like, "Is it? Is it hot?" <laughs> 
<laughs> like, oh, oh, and to his credit, there was a little fan that they would put on me when I couldn't go back all the way down to my chair, and he fanned me for the rest of the day. So. That's nice. <laughs> but I just remember, I was like, is it hot? Are you hot? I <laughs> wouldn't, want, wouldn't want you to be too hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Is the leather a bit much? Like. <laughs> <laughs> I um I I've died twice, so I do I am contract contractually obligated now to say I'm sorry, mother. I've disappointed you. <laughs> <laughs> mother forgives you. Mother forgives you. You, you are you are playing as a Klingon, right? I yeah. am. Yeah, my main character in the game is a Klingon. I've like I said, just a giant Klingon fanboy since I was a <laughs> child. I had a how to speak Klingon poster in my room growing up. You know? Oh, I love that. I never learned anything from it, <laughs> but you know I had it. Yeah. So, so while while we're while he's trying to fight his way out of out of Grethor, uh, <laughs> do you do you have anything you want to plug, Mary? Do you have anything you're working on? You anything about? specifically you asked us to plug on the show, Mary? What? <laughs> What's that? Um, yes. Well, I, I'm really thrilled because it is something that is on Twitch, and and everyone sticking around hopefully will get a peek at it mm -hmm. uh, at the end of this. But uh, yeah, so through Star Trek, uh, I met the wonderful Elisa Pearl. And she is part of an all-female group called Ripley Improv, uh, named after Ripley from Aliens. So when I heard that, I was like, hmm, I think, I think we'll be friends. <laughs> and, uh, she said she was part of that group and that she was part of the Improvised Generation, which is an improvised uh, TNG-styled uh, uh, hour-long show. And they're amazing. I had them, I booked yeah. them for a fundraiser I did earlier this year, and they yes. improvised an entire musical episode of Star Trek. I've never I'm seen anything so like it before in my life. It was so cool. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I love um, watching the their shows and supporting them and uh, at Impro Studio in um, Los Feliz. Um, it's just it's a it's just the most fun you can have on a Friday night is a good improvised uh, generation episode. And then yeah. with Ripley, I got to know a lot of the gals from Ripley. Uh, they have they did dystopian young adult novels was their first genre this is like long form genre improv is the kind of uh umbrella of all of this type of improv and um then i guessed it on glam which was inspired uh by glow so it was a bunch of women in in leotards and 80s uh hair and uh that was uh, like two two and a half years ago uh, then I um, got to know all of them more and more. And now I am currently co-producing with Jessica Lynn Verdi, who is um, one of the Ripley's. And she's a big fan of uh, Grey's Anatomy specifically, but generally medical dramas and the sexy shenanigans that people get into from that. <laughs> and she'd had this idea for uh, like, I think three or so years ago that she thought with genre improv, oh, I actually think medical dramas are so formulaic that they could really work because the reason why improvised generation works so well is as we all know the formula of those shows of like oh and here's the crew and here's their mission and you just it's something that um has a really great act structure so studying the genre and performing it uh, is really possible so she had this idea about medical dramas then last year happened and we were all sequestered um, and unable to act on stage together. And she felt that uh, this was the time to try this uh, a medical drama out. And we all, we use green screens um, and have backgrounds that are kind of coordinated with each other. So it really looks like people are in scenes together in the same hallway or in the same uh, surgery room. And uh, we've developed some new things that actually we, we reopened. We had a run in the fall um, on the Ripley Improv Twitch, and uh, this Friday we have another eight-week run, and we have some new technological things we've developed where you might be able to see people actually in the same room together somehow, uh, in the same shot in the same room. My so, God! Uh, there's a lot of really cool things that you can do now uh, with OBS, uh, which is oh, yeah. the uh, testing system that we use. We're filming it on Zoom. That's what we um, use right now. I'm, we're using right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. It's and it's and it's great. And we are uh, Rachel Wasserman, who's also a big uh, Trekkie. I've actually run into her at Vegas conventions as well. She's our OBS operator and is amazing. We have the awesome Kelly Lohman, who's part of Ripley live editing on Zoom. So she's literally cutting and feeling the beats and moments as people are acting together and creating completely new and unexpected scenes. 
And all of our characters are like with, if you've, if you've seen Improvised Generation, the main crew is the same crew every week and they learn more and more about their characters as they improvise together. So similarly, we have everyone is a doctor, an established doctor at the hospital. And uh, we all um, learn more and more about uh, them uh, as uh, in real time. So we find out past histories and, and current romances. Uh, we don't pre-plan any of that. And it's just really fun. The, ca uh, the uh, chat is part of the show. They give a suggestion at the beginning. We ask them uh, at our first commercial break who we want to see in the next scene together. Uh, then we have a kind of wild card question before the third act based off of what's happened, you know, if two characters are at odds, you know, will they resolve their problem or whatever, and you get to vote. And uh, so it's just really fun. Jessica uh, has just been such a wonderful director and co-producer. And she's also uh, Dr. Annabelle Love, our own Meredith Grey uh, type character, our protagonist. <laughs> um, and uh, we just have a really, really stellar cast uh, our regular cast is 12 people. We have guest stars every week. Um, and we just create, we create a serialized story all together. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, it's really delightful. And, it's fabulous. And, I've seen some episodes before because as soon as yeah. I heard improvised medical drama, I had to go see right? what the heck that was. Uh, right? And it's amazing. Uh, Aliza is by the way in chat. Uh, she says hi. <laughs> um, uh, and yeah, she, I, I also, I also wanted to point out that uh, she is also in the game. Uh, not her voice, but um, her character from Shield of Tomorrow is uh, a, 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 someone you can find in our game uh, if you know where to look. <laughs> ah, I didn't know. I love... <laughs> That's so uh, cool. But yeah, Liz is awesome. And, yeah. and she is an incredible Klingon uh, in her own right. Yeah. She also hosted that fundraiser uh, that I was talking about, and she was amazing. And yes, uh, blood, go watch Blood of the Void, everyone. We'll talk, yes. We can talk more about yeah. that another time. I'll, I'll drag Elisa on this stream to talk about it. But anyway, let's wake <laughs> up. Uh-oh. <laughs> We're coming Wait, out yeah. of Grethor now. It was all a dream, kind of, maybe. It was all a dream. It's like... <laughs> Somebody Lord. in in chat somebody in the fan questions asked hold on i don't want to interrupt the scene if it's got dialogue but um uh, okay um do you think laurel ever had a private moment with tenovic like went to go see her grown-up son you mean outside of outside of the times that you've you've seen her in this time but like you know in in her own lifetime before we resurrect her. Yeah, I, I I think that's again I think that's such a wonderful question and one I've wondered about. There's actually my banner uh, on Twitter is a piece of fan art that someone created that's Laurel holding Tanavik's uh, face in her hands. Aww. It's really beautiful and the, the style of the painting. She looks older to me, and I don't know if I'm just projecting, but I, part of why I made it my banner not just because it fits very nicely. <laughs> is that that sentiment of like i would love to think that uh perhaps you know that is part of her journey is eventually getting to be reunited with this with this son one of the most heartbreaking scenes uh to to do and to watch is that the, the last one that uh tyler and laurel have with pike i think it's so lovely and sad <laughs> just learning that he has a name and you know that He's okay, um, yeah. but she's made the choice that for now, uh, it's not the right time to to see him. But I I, I do love that, and particularly um, with Ken having originated the part uh, in that episode, and uh, just the closeness that we have. Um, I was that was just a very um, beautiful endowment that the writers gave me, and at that point. Uh, was that bittersweet satisfaction that she knew he was okay, but it wasn't quite the time to see him just yet. Yeah. Al, Laurel's had too much tragedy. Give her a happy story now. This is her reunion, right? So, yeah. yeah. And her son is a Time Lord, so... Yeah, yeah so basically... there you go. Exactly. No, I, I... Yeah. Oh, right, and this is the part where this when I where saw she... this yeah. clip, when Al sent it to me, I was like, oh, that's the choice I would have made! <laughs> <laughs> I also love uh, the choice. This outfit was, I loved all of my Chancellor outfits, but this one, this final battle, yeah. I just so good. loved it. So great. And Gersha Phillips, our designer and her whole team, 
they just spent so much time meticulously putting it all together. Roll credits. That see that 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 eye glancing hundred percent would have done that exactly. <laughs> Weston Weston probably watched like four hours of your performances just to pick that yeah. out. Like, like he's amazing. I, mean, I my I definitely my eye acting like went up like a whole ton. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can convey things by like doing stuff with you. Like, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, this I is am... Rekha Sharma, by the way. Yeah. 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 And she's, she's so amazing. Awesome. I love mm -hmm. I love that we brought her back for Edit Pa because Edit Pa yeah. is such a great character too. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to switch over because we don't need to show you guys the uh, the space, space battle. Fight. It'll just yeah. be it'll just be me blowing up a lot. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, I'm gonna switch back over here and just say yeah. uh, this has been an absolute pleasure, Mary. Thank you so much for joining us um, uh, and then lending us your time. Um, I know you're very busy being a wonderfully talented and famous actress. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I try, I try. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, thank you. I know yeah. a lot of times um, people could look at coming on to being a voice in a video game of an old of a character they played before as you know like oh this is just something I did for fun for a weekend and I'm not going to think about it again and the fact that you've been so engaged with us on social media and you've been so uh, so like spouting our praises and all these different interviews and stuff we just the whole team really really appreciates it it makes them it, it helps them feel like their hard work was really worth it and so we, we really appreciate that well, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. There's nothing more delightful to to work on something for so long and to have have someone like yourself breathe life into the characters and the work. And it's just it. We're sometimes in the audio recording booth, we're like yeah, that's like it's so good, <laughs> it's so good. And it's just like yeah. it's just all it just doesn't come together until that last moment, till the voice actor breathes life in their character, and to see to see you bring Laurel into life into into what we built so many people are involved like just building the environment the the animations the character art the effects you know the storytelling the lighting yeah. a lot of people make that come together um and it just makes brings a lot of joy to everyone and a lot of players as you can see about people very very mm -hmm. grateful in the chat blowing up now so yeah, yeah. i'm very grateful for your time thank you very <laughs> thank much you. mary and what's just to top off? What is what is the name of your show, and where can people? Where can well, people we're find gonna it? actually go rate it right now. Uh, we're gonna rate so it. Okay. at the end of this episode, uh, everybody in chat, don't go anywhere. You're gonna be taken right to the Ripley Improv Twitch channel. Uh, give them a follow. Enjoy the uh, heartbeats stream you're going to get. Uh, but also, and is there anything else you would like to plug? Your social media, anything else? You know, where can people? Yeah, follow it, you? yeah, it's, uh, yeah. If you're not following me already, I am Mary the Chief. A play on my last name uh, <laughs> on Twitter and Instagram. It's the same. Um, and uh, one, F, one F or two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, one F. One F. One F. One F. One F. One F. Yeah. So okay. M A R Y T H E C H I E F. Okay. Um, that's yeah. So Twitter and Instagram. I'm I I'm active on both. Uh, I and love a joy to follow, if I may say so myself. <laughs> okay, <laughs> said, oh, good. good. Um, yeah, and I really do love being able to interact as much as possible on Twitter. Uh, you know, if my if it's a nice way to still be doing work, but also be present with people and celebrate, you know, art and uh, everyone's just um, the the Trek community, as we all know, is is so special. And getting to witness relationships build online and then meet people in person in the future which will happen again um but uh i i'm just really uh, grateful for that outside of heartbeats though um heartbeats is the big thing right now because like, as we said we open 6 p.m pacific time um on friday and we're actually going to be jumping into uh an episode when we raid that uh i come back as a ghost in the halloween episode spoiler Ooh. alert but if if that doesn't make you stick around for the episode, I don't know what does. Improvised uh, ghost. Yeah. I, I came on as the guest in the first episode and was uh, endowed to be the sister of Dr. Ayub, who was one of our main doctors, who tragically uh, died uh, on the table. Mm. It, it's very dramatic. Um, <laughs> but uh, we, we have found a lot of fun ways uh, to play with how she can come back, and, and ghost form is one of them. Um, <laughs> outside of that... Um, 
I am, there's a lot of stuff that's percolating, uh, things that I've, uh, passion projects that I've been developing with friends that are really starting to catch up momentum. So I hope, you know, next time I'm on, I'll be able to tell you more specifically. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, right now heartbeats is the name of the game and I host it every week and have host the downbeat afterwards where we talk about the episode and we all kind of hang out. Uh, so if you want to just hang on Twitch with me, uh, every Friday night, please do. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and we will see you in a few seconds as we raid Ripley improv in five, four, three, two, one. Well, actually, no. Now we have to wait ten seconds okay. for the raid to start. <laughs> I forgot. I enter the command, oh, and really, then really then really five well, seconds. Really, <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay, raiding now. <laughs> All right. And